Hey guys, Mr. King here, and today I am with Adrian Boissonon, and he is visiting here, a visiting scholar from the Swiss Institute of Technology. So, Adrian, could you tell us a little bit about your research? Okay, all right. Uh, so, uh, so uh, they, have, uh, they have joined the University of Washington for, uh, for uh, one year project, which is taking part in a bigger project. So, I like to say that I am doing rehabilitation using like brain-machine interface. And by rehabilitation, I mean that uh, my goal is to help uh, people that have lost the function of their limb, for example, their arm or their legs, to, to help to regain this function, like for example, for people that I have a spinal cord injuries or which get a, uh, which get a uh, stroke. And uh, when I say I'm doing like uh, brain machine ex uh, brain machine interface, I mean like uh, I am connected my computer uh, to the brain in a, in order to read and decode uh, the electrical signal uh, sent uh, by the brain. For example, uh, people with a spinal cord injury, so these people have a cut in this spinal cord, so there is no more connection between the brain and the arm. So I connect my computer and I translate the signal in, into an order that I connect to the muscle and they can move first their arm. Because the idea is that first, uh, first with that system, patient will be able to like reuse the limb, and which is very comfortable for the daily life. And in other way, we think that uh, being able to regain the function will also help to re reconnect and regrow the signal, uh, the circuits in the spinal cord. So uh, the question is, uh, how can we use? Uh, Zao can we record and the signal into the brain. So first we were using uh, the electrode, which were originally a piece of metal that we record the electrical signal of the brain. But uh, to this question, like the electro, because we are using the brain and the human, there are things that we can't do, and the electrode, the electrode should not be toxic for the human, but which we and it's important to have a very like fine and precise and precise signal to being able to to record a very uh, fine uh, movement of the finger for example and so personally uh, me uh, i am looking at different kind of electrode uh, that can be used for example some electrode can go inside the brain some other can be put at the surface uh, at the surface of the brain and uh, I am also like building a translator for each of the, the electrodes that we can use to to decode the to decode the brain signal into into uh, into an order for the muscle. Okay, in science one of the eight practices of science is analyzing and interpreting data and scientists do this all the time can you explain or give an example of how you use that in your research yeah so for um, for so for my research like the analysis and the interpretation of the data is one of the last steps that we do so uh, it's happened after the so after the design and after the recording of the data, it's analyzed and, I and interpretation. I can't say that it is the most important part, but definitely it's a part where where big mistake can be done without us noticing it. So, uh, so first, what we do is we use lots of uh, literature, like we read lots lots of literature to know what other people have made and uh, how do you how do they made it and what they get because it's important to know what we can expect it's very important because now with the computer we can record a large amount of data like we often talk about big data and it's good to have like lots of data because we can have very uh, precise data uh, precise interpretation but in another way uh, with this 
large amount of data, it's easy to be lost. So that's why it's important to to know what we can expect and in which uh, direction the analysis uh, will be made. Because, for example, in the brain, like uh, it's a very big electrical mess that all the neurons communicate by each other by sending electrical signal. So when I put my electrode and I record a signal, I am also recording, like I'm recording lots of uh, data that I'm not necessarily interesting it. So that's why one of the first part of the analysis is uh, to filter the data and to reduce uh, the amount of it to very, so, so we can show that we are recording uh, only the data we are interesting it. For example, if I am interested in the arm movement, I, I will place my electrode uh, on the su on the surface where uh, the neurons are responsible of the arm movement. But it's for sure that we that I will also record uh, all the signal. So that's why it's important to filter the data and to reduce this amount. So and it's after this uh, filtering that we can. Uh, translate this data, for example using mathematical model, and uh, we will translate uh, for the analysis in a way that we can, that this data can be understood by the human. So basically we record like lots of number, so just number, number of electrical signal, and we will translate it with the computer in, into uh, lots of different graphs using color or different, sh different graphs, yeah, and so we can, so and it is with this data that a human can read, we will inter interpret them. Like the analysis is very important for the interpretation. And it's only with this interpretation that we will able to conclude, make conclusion to reject or not the, the initial hypothesis. All right. Thank you much. Thank you.